Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. Let's recap this week for you. Monday, Russia shells Ukraine. Kiev applies to join the EU. Tuesday, a Russian convoy amasses outside Kiev. Ukrainian President Zelensky calls on the West to impose a no-fly zone. Wednesday, Russia says Kherson has fallen to the Kremlin. An attack on Kharkiv destroys Slovenia's consulate building. Sweden accuses Russia of airspace violation. 143 countries vote against Russia and the United Nations. Thursday, massive explosions hit Kiev. The United Nations says more than a million people have fled Ukraine. Where did they go? Poland, Romania, Germany, Slovakia, Russia, Belarus. Do you notice the pattern here? With every passing day, this war is becoming bigger. With every passing day, this war is pulling in more countries. Here's a thought. Can you call this a world war? Is this World War III? A British news outlet has a legit page on World War III. Currently, it is flooded with news from Ukraine. In another part of the world, an African politician says that his continent needs World War III. Apparently, it will be good for Africa. Don't ask me how. How many of you recognize this man? He is Dan Quayle, a former US Vice President. He recently said that the world is on the verge of World War III. A geopolitics experts believe we are already in World War III. Here's what Russia has to say. World War III will involve nukes. That's Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The British Queen reportedly has a speech prepared for World War III. This is what it says. I have never forgotten the sorrow and the pride I felt as my sister and I huddled around the nursery wireless set, listening to my father's inspiring words on that fateful day in 1939. Not for a single moment did I imagine that this solemn and awful duty would one day fall to me, but whatever terrors lie in wait for us all, the qualities that have helped to keep our freedom intact twice during this sad century will once more be our strength. The speech was originally written in 1983. This was at the height of the Cold War. It was made public in 2013. The day Russia invaded Ukraine, World War III was trending on Twitter. Brings me back to my questions. Is this World War? And is this World War III? Let's place the current war against the definitions and checklists set by history. A world war is a war that involves the whole world, or at least the majority of it. World War I, for example, involved all of these countries. As we speak, only Ukraine and Russia are fighting. The rest of the countries are not on the front line. So history won't agree if we call the war in Ukraine a world war. But here's something else that history tells us. World wars often start small. Flashback 1914. On the 28th of June, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in Bosnia. He was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. His assassin was a Serbian nationalist. A month after the assassination, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. A domino effect followed. Let's pull that map once again. Initially, only these countries were at war. More joined next year. And the year after, the United States joined the war. By 1918, almost all countries were fighting. But it all began with just two countries and one assassination. So that was World War I. What about the Second World War? Flashback 1939. Germany invades Poland on the 1st of September. Two days later, Britain and France declare war on Germany. Once again, it has a domino effect. Before you know it, the whole world is fighting. At least 50 million people are dead. Again, it all began with one country invading another. So outbreaks need not be massive for a war to pull in more countries. Even a war between two countries can escalate and become a world war. World wars have clear alliances. Prominent countries are divided. World War I had the Triple Entente and the Triple Alliance. The first side had France, Russia and Britain. The alliance had Germany, Austria, Hungary and Italy. World War II had the Axis powers and the Allies. Germany, Italy and Japan were the Axis powers. France, Britain, the US and the Soviet Union were the Allies. At a glance, only two countries seem to be fighting in Ukraine. But if you zoom out, you will see a divided world. Each country has picked a side. The United Nations General Assembly's recent emergency vote is proof. The Assembly was voting on a resolution. It called for the withdrawal of Russian troops from Ukraine. Voting for the resolution meant voting against Russia and in favor of Ukraine. 
141 countries voted in favor of Ukraine. The list includes the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada and Australia. Four countries voted in favor of Russia, Belarus, North Korea, Syria and Eritrea. 35 countries abstained. These countries decided to not take sides, to not get involved in a war that's neither of them making nor theirs to fight. America, too, was in a similar position during the First World War. Initially, it kept out of Europe's war. This was until American interests started bleeding. Things changed rapidly in 1917. The war had entered its fourth year. Germany had launched a naval blockade of the UK. German U-boats or submarines were placed in key trade routes and tasked with sinking ships carrying essential supplies and raw materials. The idea was to starve Britain into surrendering. Between March 16th and 18th, German submarines sank three U.S. merchant ships. There was heavy loss of life. U.S. President Woodrow Wilson decided to declare war on Germany. Back to the war in Ukraine. Here's what's happened in the last one week alone. On the 2nd of March, an Indian student was killed in Ukraine. The same day, Slovenia's consulate building in Kharkiv was bombed. On the 3rd of March, Sweden accused Russia of airspace violation. The same day, Ukraine said it is welcoming foreign fighters. On the 4th of March, Russia put the entire continent in danger by attacking a nuclear power plant. Will countries be left with no option but to join this war if their interests or their own people continue bleeding? NATO is already prepared for an escalation. It has beefed up deployment in Eastern Europe. But France maintains it is not at war with Russia. At least not yet. This was the 3rd of March. The same day, French President Emmanuel Macron got on a phone call with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Putin told Macron that he wants entire Ukraine. Macron came out of the 90-minute phone call and declared that the worst is yet to come. What exactly will the worst look like? Will it be a large-scale European conflict or a wider armed conflict involving countries from around the world? Think about it. Our world is already fighting multiple wars. Experts believe China's conflict with Taiwan will turn into a military conflict sometime in the next decade. China is also fighting multiple countries in the South China Sea, the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei. India and China are caught in a standoff. There is a conflict between Iran and Israel. Iran and the United States. The United States and North Korea are arch enemies. So are the United States and Cuba. There is also a war in Syria, a war in Yemen. Israel and Palestine are fresh out of a bloody battle. The United Arab Emirates was recently hit by missiles. It is hard to rule out that countries or non-state actors will seize on a distracted world and pursue their geopolitical dreams. It is hard to rule out that an escalation on the sidelines of Ukraine will drag in more countries. It is also hard to rule out that the war in Ukraine itself will intensify and swallow more nations. Lavrov was right when he said World War III will involve nukes. Nine countries are said to have nuclear weapons today. The US, Russia, France, China, the UK, Pakistan, India, Israel and North Korea. In total, there are 13,000 weapons. Enough and more to wipe out our world. Russia has put its nuclear deterrent team on alert. The US has postponed the scheduled test of its ballistic missile. Why? Perhaps to avoid sending a wrong signal. Our world cannot afford to go to war. Earlier this week, a campaigner from Ukraine confronted British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. She claimed NATO was afraid of World War III, but said the war had already started. But here's the thing. One cannot be sure of what lies ahead. Is this a prelude to World War III? Is this the end of the post-Cold War era? Or is this Cold War II? That last question was put to US President Joe Biden. A journalist asked him, are we seeing a new Cold War? It depends, said Biden. From where I'm sitting, I see ample signs of a new Cold War. There are two clear sides, one led by the US, another by Russia. Then there are countries that have chosen to stay out. There is talk of a possible world war, signs of an escalating conflict. And I see a president who refuses to back down. But one thing's for sure, whichever side our world swings, we are entering an entirely new era of geopolitics.